Hi everyone, welcome to the IPFS Core Implementations Weekly Sync for Monday the 20th of July 2020. It's a lot of 20s in the date today. Uh, we're going to go through all our initiatives um, and then go through questions and blockers and asks and that sort of thing. So for the high priority initiatives, the first thing is upcoming and ship releases. Uh, so we shipped uh, JS IPFS 0.48, which is great. Um, so that gave us uh, delegates on by default. Um, it gave us uh, fixes for DHT configuration and storing blocks by multi-hash instead of uh, via CID. Um, so for hopefully faster lookups and a smaller overall repo size. Please do install it and uh, yeah, let us know how you get on. Have there been any other shipped releases? Nope. Uh... I think my current thinking is that we're probably just going to bundle 061 with 07 um, just because there's there's a bunch to do and we'd rather release 07 sooner rather than later. Fair enough. Uh, moving on, uh, pinning services. Oh, yeah, okay. I'll go. <laughs> um, yeah, so there's a, um, the API and client development should be unblocked now. Um, we've got like basic approval on the spec. Nothing big should change. There may be some, some small tweaks as we go along, um, but that should be ready to implement. Um, I need to create a issue in Go IPFS to track implementation of the client in Go, um, and then whatever other things that we need um, for IPFS desktop to be able to hook into that, um, we can we can flush out in that issue. Um, but from there, we should be should be good to go and all unblocked for for moving forward with that. And then I will just move on to ED keys since that is next. Um, so the there's the tracking issue there for Go. Um, there's a couple, there's a few things left that need to get cleaned up there, um, like IPNS key output. Um, there's some sharpness test issues, um, but nothing. I don't think there's anything major there left, at Dean. Right? Yeah. No, nothing major. We may probably as bundling this, we should. Uh, at least in Go multi-adder, add support for base 36 encoding or like, yeah, CIDV1 encoding at all um, in Go multi-adder. Uh, but it shouldn't be, shouldn't be a big deal. Yeah. Um, and then the other one of the issue that was blocking that was um, interrupt with JS. Um, and the big problem there was uh, JS wasn't able to unmarshal Go keys. Um, so a while back, Go changed. There was an issue where Loop P2P was taking the ED keys and encoding them as like private public in your private key that also includes your public key already when that gets marshaled. Um, but we were also appending the public key again. So it was redundant. And Go got rid of that a while ago, um, but JS didn't. And so when we go to unmarshal the Go keys, we fail because the Go key is not long enough because we're expecting that extra public key in there. Um, so that is fixed. And I just released an update to the P2B JS crypto today. Um, that includes that fix. I didn't change how JS is marshalling the key to avoid breaking change. So we'll continue to put the redundant public key in there for now because um, Go handles both. Um, but later I'll get rid of that um, to avoid any breaking changes. But I don't think too many people are using ED25519 in JS IPFS because they can't, because uh, it breaks. Um, and along with that, along those lines, the problem that we have with JS using ED keys is importing and exporting keys. Um, that, like, the way JS is handling it, it exports and imports keys into the keychain based on um, it being formatted as a PEM. Uh, but that is like support for their 
in JS is atrocious across the board. Um, just crypto in JS is, is rough. And then also balancing bundle size in the browser is a bit of a nightmare. Um, so what we're likely going to look at doing, I talked with Alex a bit today, is to just for the ED keys and like SCCP keys to just change those over to um, import and export as protobufs because that is the libp2p default. Um, and then later make RSA do that also. And then one of the requirements is that we also support like just password encoding of those keys. Um, so what we'll likely do is just take the libp2p protobuf and then add um, just like symmetric password encryption on that and then export that so that it still has that same behavior, but will default to the protobuf. This will be like the easiest and quickest fix that we can get for JS IPFS to be able to start using ED keys. Um, if anybody has concerns there, let me, let me know. Um, eventually we'd like to support PEM in a variety of other formats, um, but that's gonna require a significant overhaul of Liberty Crypto to do that. Yeah, I guess uh, two things. One is, is there any reason why GoIPFS needs to be able to deal with the password stuff? Like GoIPFS has like a, we will decode password encrypted private keys function that just does nothing right now because it was never implemented. Do we yeah, need to implement that? So Go doesn't export keys at all. Like you can't yeah. export keys in Go. Um, in JS, you can. Um, okay. So you can export them. Um, and so that's that's the big difference there. And so that's really what we're, we need to support that because that functionality is leveraged um, by IPNS to get the, get the keys out. Okay, makes sense. Uh, I, I have a note or and a question. One is you might want to consider deriving the key out of the password and then using that as uh, for the encryption rather than password itself, because you can get a better, uh, uh, sorry, I'm leaking out on the terms, but the, stronger I encryption. Know. I don't know. I'm, I am more skeptical about key derivation functions because like they never have enough entropy to do any good. But like, you can maybe, do it. Yeah. I think the, the main concern that the API is trying to handle is that the, the API, the keys are encrypted when they're stored. Um, that's the big thing there. So they're password encrypted when they're stored. So they're not just stored unencrypted. Um, that's like the big thing from the API key. Uh, we do support, like we do support at least in ED keys in JS, we support creating from, from a seed, uh, which could be a password. So you can actually derive from the seed with ED keys. Um, but I don't think we're actually using the seed creation anywhere in in the IPFS ecosystem um, for JS. I think that's just a, somebody's wanted that in libp2p, so we support it. Um, you weren't, and, and Eric, you weren't was, asking about that. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, I, I wasn't, but it's okay. Uh, uh, the other things that I wanted to ask, is there a reason why we're not leveraging system keychains rather than having to do our own thing? It seems like every OS has something these days. I would say that there's not a good reason. Uh, there may have been a good reason like two or three years ago, but that was two or three years ago. Um, that code like keychain and crypto have been very untouched in the last couple of years. Um, and it, it needs an overhaul and an update like that whole API of crypto needs an overhaul. So in theory, I don't think there's anything stopping us from using system keychains, um, but we would just need to validate that or evaluate it rather. Would it be useful to create an issue about it so we get to that at some point? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll do that. Okay. Thank you. And that is it for ED keys. Cool, next up is the subdomain gateway. Though it does say no news this week. Yeah, so um, the remaining task, as far as I know, uh, is shipping Go IPFS 0.7 with uh, that uh, fix for ED uh, keys uh, uh, in subdomains and coded in base 36. Um, and writing a blog post, but we could probably move this section to other initiatives uh, or, yeah.
Next up is the Rust initiative with what's looking like an LCD mega update. Yeah, I'm sort of making up for the past few weeks when I haven't been around and uh, we've been busy. Um, the biggest piece of news is the um, add functionality. So Unix, uh, Unix FS importing now um, is working for single files. It's still a little shaky, but we're, uh, we're getting through it. It's just functionality that touches a huge breadth of, of things inside IPFS. Um, we've improved our conformance testing workflow a lot using Git patches. Um, so instead of submitting pull requests to JSIPFS, um, we're just patching it locally just to change some of the APIs that we need. Um, and now what we're working towards is getting the Rust IPFS nodes to bootstrap and swarm globally um, with content discovery and content providing want list and all that stuff. So you can look through the pull requests that I've linked um, here. Uh, the other thing is there's some HTTP H API improvements, uh, most notably the streaming multi-part work um, to update all that and some Rust uh, API improvements like arc archifying um, some of the inner IPFS uh, structs to make them easier to pass around and do multi-threading work. And um, we've also added the BORS tool for uh, build and pull request approval uh, automation and things like that. So um, all across the board, things are getting faster and more uh, featureful, I suppose. That's all from us. That is awesome. Uh, next up is uh, JSLib P2P sign peer records and gossip sub. V1.1. Yeah, so for the signed record side of things, Jacob got everything reviewed last week. And basically, the PRs for the interface record, the peer record and envelope implementation were also merged for the 0 0.29 release branch. Uh, and it, together with the exchanging of the signed peer records in the identify protocol. So, for this uh, part of things to get done, we just need to have the certified address book PR merged which was also reviewed in the, the review address. So I think it should be ready or mostly ready to be merged. Uh, in the gossip sub uh, side of things, uh, we are basically refactoring the base web sub implementation. This thanks to all the work that came and did in the gossip sub update. We basically wanted to extract some of that work to the base implementation so that the uh, flood sub also leverage it. And yeah, also gossip sub uh, after this, we'll need to get the signed peer records also integrated in the peer exchange PR, which is currently in progress. And with that, we will need to start looking into the interrupt tests. And uh, for that, for this, we are uh, currently blocked on uh, some goal B2P demon updates. It would be great if anyone from the goal folks could uh, uh, get that landed. And yeah, that's everything from the gossip sub side of things. Uh, yeah, I mean, moving to the next section. Uh, I basically renamed it from uh, Rendezvous to JS Improves Discoverability and Connectivity. Basically, because we will be looking into a broader scope uh, of what we want to achieve. And uh, from one side is Rendezvous, but we are, we, if you look at the issue that I linked, there are other things that Jacob created that will be our path in order to improve this side of things. And so in the Rendezvous, uh, I'm currently working on getting the spec updated with the sign peer records and uh, another other minor stuff that I looked during the implementation. And uh, yeah, with that, I also need to integrate the sign peer records in the rendezvous. And uh, I'm also working on uh, a proposal for getting rendezvous as a discovery uh, protocol like the other ones, so that we can basically leverage out of the box uh, everything that the other uh, uh, discovery services do like the peer discovery events and also to add everything to the address book without any user uh, manual work and also allow uh, power users to do them do that themselves if they wish to uh, and yeah and uh, uh, after the rendezvous getting to a state of review i will probably start working on the auto relay as part of also of this initiative and yeah that's it I sort of missed it. What was the Golib P2P request? 
Uh, it's to uh, there is currently one uh, PR to basically update the Dolly P2P DIM and uh, go mod to use the latest, not the latest, but the previous latest release of JSL P2P. But it would be good to have both so that we can uh, uh, test interop with uh, the latest two releases of Dolly P2P. Okay. Cool, so that's the end of the, um, the main initiatives section. Uh, moving on to the other initiatives. Uh, so Unix first v1.5, um, there's no update really. Um, on the GoIPFS issue, somebody volunteered to pick up the work, so that's quite exciting. Um, I'm not quite sure what happens next there. But. Uh, the migrations multi hash keys in the block store that are shipped in JSIPFS now. Um, so that's cool. The next section for the pinning system revamp, I'm going to pick that up this week. Um, but I want to get all of Iraqi's changes in because I'm feeling like a bit of a bottleneck to a lot of that stuff. So I'm going to concentrate on that and then hopefully later in the week pick up the um, pinning system stuff. Um, so next up, shared RPFS note. Uh, yeah, so um, I did. Uh, uh, I think I got the. I put them in the wrong place. Uh, my notes, sorry. Uh, um, I did an example. Uh, choose a shared IPFS node uh, that demonstrates using it. Uh, kind of like we have other examples. Uh, I've updated a pull request to do that and. It's awaiting on the review. I still have to pull in the newest stuff, uh, namely IPFS add and IPFS add all separation. And I'm gonna work on that today, update the pull request again. Um, the next one is improving web file add, uh, which is, uh, so we had a conversation with Alex and Hugo and uh, decided to pull out the file and blob pieces uh, out of the JS IPFS, which I did and published as a library linked in the notes. Um, I have pulled in and integrated changes for IPFS add and add all separation in there um, and updated pull request. Uh, I added a bunch of uh, tests to try to catch all kind of regressions that might happen in our add input normalization to make sure that down the line we don't regress um, in uh, improvements. And yeah, so uh, the pull request now is uh, blocked on review. So other thing is we do have another patch for the web UI that is supposedly fixes that, which is the primary use case, uh, which kind of waits on the changes in JS IPFS to land before we can take them in there. Also, one thing that came uh, to my mind that maybe it is worth landing that pull request without waiting waiting for JS IPFS. Right now, it does optimization uh, uh, like uh, by just consuming JS IPFS HTTP API directly, uh, and once JS IPFS changes lands, then we can rip that piece out and make use of JS IPFS. Uh, I don't know if that's worth doing or not, but if we're having a time pressure, we could consider doing that too. Uh, so that's it. Cool, uh, so moving on to design review proposals. Nothing in that section. Blockers and asks. Questions. Oh, Adi. Yes, I may ask. Oh, go ahead. No, no, over to you. Um, there, uh, there's an issue with IPNS keys. Um, using IPNS over PubSub between uh, JS and Go, where you sort of like you publish on JS and then you have trouble resolving in Go. Uh, this is. I think, I think this is just because of an issue where like we were, we kept around the whole um, looking for public keys separately from IPNS records, which has been obsolete for a while. Um, I have a PR that I think should fix this. 
but it would be great if someone could run it with the interop tests. Um, I think a contributor put out a new branch that exhibits the failure uh, and sees if it'll work. Um, yeah, so that, that would be great. As an added bonus, this will speed up IPNS resolution on IPFS for basically free. Um, I have a question that isn't related to REST IPFS, but related to the pinning API. Um, we are, uh, this is about OrbitDB. We're exploring using the pinning API or the pinning spec to allow OrbitDB to hook up to things like Filecoin or um, other, you know, uh, things of that nature. And I'm wondering, the question is, should we move ahead now with um, something like Powergate to integrate with, with Filecoin, or should we wait for the pinning API to be more quote unquote ready, or should we collaborate and figure out if um, OrbitDB you know, can, can help smooth out some of the use cases or, or things like that? Um, and I'm wondering if anybody here would be willing to hop on probably a different call or just email with me or something to hash some of that out. Yeah, I think maybe Lytle and I could, could hop on and, and talk about that. I think like that might depend what you want to do because like right now that the pinning service spec is very like, it's very basic because we're not sure like what that's going to look at long term. And there's like a lot of discussion around, okay, let's change pinning to actually like just be like to pin threads. Um, but we need to do a lot more work to flush that out. So I think like if you want to go that direction, then I haven't looked a lot of PowerGate, but maybe PowerGate's a, a better route to go down for that. Um, but we can we can chat at, about that offline or hop okay. on a call or something to talk about that. Now. Yeah, why don't somebody send me a, a good way to reach y'all or I'll, I'll get in touch with you and then we'll, we'll sort that out. Thanks. Cool. Uh, anything for the parking lot? Oh, I guess I had to, I, I put up a PR for a DAG size command. Apparently, I was, I guess, you know, I was recently informed that there's no easy way where you can just ask for the size of a DAG without it being UnixFS and relying on the, the field that's in UnixFS. So, there, there is a, a prototype of what that would look like uh, in a PR to go IPFS. I suspect that JS IPFS may have some interest. Um, yeah. Um, a, a month or so back, I spent some time explaining to Pinata that they can't really trust the number in UnixFS and that like people could lie. <laughs> um, so we, we should definitely document that somewhere and having this command to point people at would be super useful <laughs> because it's like an actual real world kind of trusted thing that you could do. Yeah, I, I was actually I was talking to Matt about this is what sort of gave me the impetus to just do it over the weekend. <laughs> yeah, it's super useful. If you stick a link in the, um, in the notes for that, that would be rad. The one, the one thing that we, we did in the, the data structures for Unix SV2 for this and the flexible byte layout, which handles kind of like the layout for all the, the bytes, um, if you lie about the size anywhere, it means that you can't really read the data structure efficiently. So it actually breaks things when you lie. Uh, that was like as far as we could really get to, to make it less likely or, or disincentivize people to lie about the size of things. Yeah, I mean, right now it just sort of does like the simplest, dumbest thing, which is like traverse the DAG and then read out all the sizes and number of blocks and add them up and return them to you. Um, it does skip duplicates, so there is that. But like, you could be smarter and do things like don't actually read the, don't actually read raw blocks into memory because you know that they're not going anywhere. You could just get the size from disk, and that would be enough. Um, things things like that but for now it's like better than nothing 
So better than nothing. So this is kind of random, but somewhat related. Um, I'm working on an, a potential upgrade to the car file format that will stick a manifest at the end of it. And so the manifest would allow you to seek into the, the car file and actually read things out without having to, to do full parses of the, of the file or um, even full parses of the block. And so we're sort of figuring out like what should and shouldn't be in this manifest. But one thing that will obviously be in there is like block sizes. But I'm debating about whether to, or not to even put like um, link information in there so that it presents you kind of a full picture of the, the links in the DAG without ever having to parse out anything in the file or decode anything. Um, and that would really help with, with stuff like this. Like you'd be able to calculate DAGs without ever decoding a block, um, stuff like that. And so it, it may turn out that like this style of sort of manifest building is something that we also leverage for storage layers and, and things like that. Because it could make a lot of things a lot faster, including GC. Yeah, there's been a, a bunch of talk of like using manifests in various ways to, to speed up investigating data, moving data around. So like, yeah, any any exploration there is probably helpful. Yep, yep, working on it. I had an idea over the weekend and I couldn't get it out of my head, so I wrote a parser. Um, but there we are at time. Uh, thank you all for coming to the core implementations weekly sync for the 20th of July 2020. Uh, please fill out your async updates in the notes if you haven't done already. Um, and we'll see you next week. Stay safe, everyone. Bye.